All right, so we've created drums, percussion, all 32 bars. We've got a bass line that's based on a major pentatonic scale, and we've transposed it for measures 17 through 24. Cool. Something else that the project asks you to do is to do some layering, voice layering. So I'm going to show you about two or three different ways that you can do this very easily in Pro Tools. Uh, the first way is to go to your expand module for the bass part. And for me, I'm just using one of the four, um, I don't know what you would call these, like uh, slots or uh, voices uh, in the expand module. But the first one you can see, it says full finger bass. But I've actually got three more parts here that I can fill in if I want to. Uh, they don't necessarily have to be a bass sound. So I'm gonna layer something into this that's not a bass, just so you can see what the possibilities are for layering sounds on the expand module. So let's go... Mallets and choose marimba, which is like a wooden keyed mallet that percussionists sometimes will play. Now what's going to happen is it's going to trigger that voice module and it's going to play both the full finger bass and a marimba sound. So I'm going to kind of solo this track so that you can really hear what this sounds like. So here's our bass track. I'm going to hit solo and let's listen to it. So you can hear that it has a different timbre, a different quality of sound. And if I want, I can even control how much of each of those sounds we hear. So I'm going to play it back and I'm going to move the faders on the sound module here and basically mix the amount of marimba that's added to the full finger bass. So I'm going to turn it all the way down, hit play. Cool. So I can mix it however I like, and if I wanted to, I could add two more to this expand module and keep kind of shaping that sound and creating basically a new sound by layering things together. So that's one way to voice layer your bass part. Just go into expand, open up another part, and put things together. Let me show you another way. On the timeline, if we look at the bass part, and select all the bass notes. We have the ability to take all of those bass notes and actually double them either an octave up or an octave below. Let me show you how this works. I'm gonna expand my view and I'm gonna make this bass track really big. So I'm gonna go fit to window. That's gonna expand uh, the bass part so that we can see the piano roll, you know, filling up the whole space here. Uh, in the previous video, I showed you how to do voice layering with a snare drum on two and four. We hold, held the Alt key and we drug those notes up or down, and it doubled them all. So I'm going to do the same thing here on the bass part. I'm going to hold the Alt key, and I'm going to click on the first note of the bass part with the mouse, and I'm going to drag it up an octave so that if we're starting on a C, the notes that I've duplicated are going to start an octave higher. So now we have uh, finger bass, we have marimba, and we're playing it in two octaves at the same time. Let's check it out. It's just another way to try to add a little thickness or to change the character. Sometimes the voices that we choose sound so low that we almost can't even hear the pitch anymore. So I like to do this trick of, of layering up an octave higher because it kind of adds definition to the bass line and helps me hear the shape of the bass line a little bit better. All right, let's hear it with the whole track. <laughs> Cool. Let's take out the uh, click. So I'm going to go to transport and I'm just going to turn off the click right here. So that's 
starting to get a feel of what it's going to sound like with the click turned off and just hearing the sounds working together the way we have it set up. All right, last thing that I'm going to show you here is um, in the mixer view, we can start to do things like mixing the levels and the panning of our individual tracks. As we get more and more instruments, this will become more and more important. But just to kind of play around with this, I'm going to take my percussion track and I'm going to just pan them both all to one side. So what you should hear now is that the percussion is just coming out of the right side. And I could do the same thing with the bass, although it's a little weird to move it from one side to the other. But in addition to panning things left and right in the mixer view, we can also change our levels. So let's say that um, maybe the bass is a little too loud. I can just pull the whole thing back here. So I'd like you to consider when you've finished sequencing that you're not really done, that we can go back and we can add things like EQ, which is what we did on that uh, drum track. We can adjust the panning of tracks and we can adjust the output level, uh, the faders, to try to come up with a mix that sounds as balanced as it possibly can. And then the last thing is that we want to keep an eye on our master fader. So if you look at my master fader, uh, the levels are getting up there, but they're not going over. So if I were to take all these and just crank them up, you will see that the master fader is going to start turning red. So when you get those red lights on the master fader, it means you're overdriving the whole output and now things are distorting and we're not getting a clean signal. So keep an eye on the master fader and make sure that you're not going over the red, but also that you're getting a nice strong level so that when we, uh, when we listen to it, it, it has a good level and we're using uh, all the dynamic range that it has to offer. All right, I hope this was helpful. Uh, be looking for more videos coming soon.